that's than it. I did. That's right. That's a good pass. <laughs> yes, Carl, you're on headliners. Go ahead. Hey, Randy Woody, how y'all doing? Doing great, man. That's great. Good to see you again. Uh, Randy, you look like you might be getting a little bit younger. Well, thank you. That's the best compliment I've heard. Now, uh, let me get your address, and I'll send you that money. All right. All right. Uh, listen, this is uh, Coach Smith. This is Scott from down in Canapolis. Uh, just wanted to call and wish you good luck. And uh, I'm picking the Spiders to win the South Piedmont Conference this year, get by Hanson County. Um, I won't tell Ron Massey now. I'll tell you what, them spiders are for real this year. I got a feeling they're going to be like sharks. I believe they smell blood in the water. Um, question for uh, both coaches. Um, has the events of the surrounding past couple of days hurt the morale around the schools and the players as far as the uh, anticipation of the game Friday night? And have you had to do anything to um, motivate your players or keep them uh, focused? Uh, I'd like to have your comment on both that, and good luck to both coaches. Okay. Coach Massey, how about that? I guess maybe it would be a little bit different if this was the first game after the attacks, but you yeah. went through it last week. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, obviously everybody's watched television and been to the ball games last week, saw the show of unity that uh, that was expressed by, by most schools, and, and I think it's that's wonderful. I, we know we talked to our kids Tuesday. We didn't practice, and and we felt like that was the best thing to do and we talked to our kids and, and we explained to them how how important this was in their lives and that they are young men now and that they need to understand what's going on and, and they have handled it extremely well. I've been very proud of the way uh, they've handled the situation. I don't think you've got to worry about kids getting getting excited about, about this game. Uh, last year was my first year in it and I tell you, it's, uh, it's like I told our kids and like EZ said, said People in North Carolina, there's very few individuals going to have the opportunity to be part of what's going to happen Friday night, and they need to be feel like they're they're very privileged to be part of that scenario that's going to take place because that is a, it's an unbelievable atmosphere for both players, coaches, fans, uh, media. Uh, you guys have a lot of fun with it, I think, and uh, so I, I think you know uh, there's nothing. You no know, magic formula. I don't think you have to throw out there and sprinkle on the kids' heads to try to get them ready for this game. Yeah, a lot of colleges would like to have that atmosphere. I bet. Coach, how about your guys? We did the same thing Ron did. Uh, we did not have practice on Tuesday, and then when when we got back, we talked about patriotism and we talked about some issues. Uh, you know, I said in the newspaper I had one of my former players that was in the Pentagon, and my greatest fear is something happened to him until I could talk to his wife. You know, I was. I was pretty much emotional, even though it was 12 to 15 hours away from us. Uh, I think the thing that you have to remember is that football is a great teacher of life. We had an opportunity Friday night in the Mount Pleasant game to teach our community that there is something more and that when we play, we play for a reason. Of course, both teams want to win, but the solidarity of, of and the unity, as Ron said, of pulling the communities together and having the young people realize that we're going to do this for a cause and we're going to honor these people's memory and, and what they've done for us. And, you know, it, it was a great opportunity for us to witness as adults to young people. Uh, I wasn't born when Pearl Harbor took place. I was born when John Kennedy was assassinated, and I remember that vividly. Um, this is probably the most dramatic things happened in my life, and, and I still, I can't listen to the national anthem anymore and listen to it, and I've heard it a thousand times as a player and a coach. I can't even listen to it anymore without getting emotional about it because I think about what my dad, and I'm sure Ron's and other other fathers did, and our friends to fight for our freedom. And, um, you know, it, it just really, it touched me and our kids too. Our kids were very unified that night. Okay.